So my name is Sigrun, Sigrun Kalan, and I have worked in a data protection field for a really long time. Uh, my experience spans first, I started off in a think tank, then I was in the corporate world for a while, and for the last four years, I've had the privilege of working within the UN system. I started in the data protection field in 1998. You know, back then there wasn't very much. And, um, you know, what I see today is that, you know, now there are data protection laws in on every continent and in the majority of countries in the world have some form of data protection. And also most companies or most organizations have a policy and they also have started there are, people are on different stages in the journey, but they've started at least to have a data management program. So, um, in addition to that, you know, you know most, most organizations, we build data protection on a common standard and common principles. And we speak the same language, which is a new thing, so, which makes it much easier because we, when we talk data protection, we all understand each other. We know what it's about. Well, you know, a policy is, of course, important and guidelines that build on the policy are important and a dedicated team to carry out the data protection work is super important. But as important, I think, is to build data protection within the organization, to get buy-in and to create a data protection culture. Because without a data protection culture, your framework can be fine, but you won't it won't be solid and it won't be sustainable. I think what is a common challenge within the UN organizations is to, the first one I will start with, is to uh, bridge the HQ country office divide, as I see it. Because the policies and the guidelines are most often created at the HQ level. While the data and the people who need the most protection most often at the country level. You know, at the country office, you know, I've, my experience is that, you know, staff are dedicated. Staff knows, you know, they know about data protection. They really want to do the right thing. So what we need to do then is to develop easy to use tools and methods for them to use. Um, and other is, of course, you know, getting external organizations to take the UN data protection framework seriously because we have our privileges and immunities so that our legal framework is based on UN law and not on country law. So when we deal with external parties, we often get the question, do you comply with GDPR? And we don't, and we can't, and we won't because we have our privileges and immunities. So that is something that we have to educate the world and also get big donors as the EU to kind of to formally come out and say, you know, that yes, the UN's framework is solid. I think the final commonality would be intra-UN cooperation. Because it's especially, again, if you go back to the country level, so many UN organizations are working in the same country, right? And we could really, really benefit from cooperating and, and sharing resources and sharing and, you know, sharing data if that is responsible. As for FAO, I think one of our strengths is the um, governance structure that you have set up. With the, the data protection function being within the Inspector General's um, office, and then and then that you have the data protection oversight committee but that provides dedicated oversight. You have you already started immediately. You have a governance structure in place, which I think think is a strength. That what I've seen from other organizations, and I haven't been in that many, but the governance structure has come kind of afterwards. But you have that first. So you have, which should provide legitimacy, you know, and make you be able to have a good foundation. DPU should have a good foundation to go out and, you know, develop a data protection program because you have this government structure. Then, you know, I would say that everything I've said about developing tools, practical tools, both for the field and for HQ to use, is very important. 
because the policy itself is well, it's it's a piece of digital paper, right? And it's it's hard to figure out to do the right thing just based on the policy. And then in addition to that, what I also said I think earlier about that, take as much as possible a common sense approach, right? Um, not present it as being something difficult. This is something that we're already doing. You know, we protect people, we protect data, we protect assets. So, you know, it's it's not, it shouldn't be a new way of thinking. So, and then also, you know, to try to then to develop a an, a data protection culture within FAO. I think all that, it's, it's, I mean, you have, you have a solid foundation with a governance structure, you have the policy. So now it's just to push forward. I think, you know, you will, you will be in good shape. Thank you.